Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home, we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. Solo Scriptura. Back to the Word of God and the Word of God only. Now, we're talking about what is God going to do to this nation, and we're going to look at its sins and then its major sins. And I want you to understand something very fundamental here. The Word of God applies to us as a nation, exactly as it applies in the Bible, one originally given by Jeremiah to the nation of Judah and Israel, because we are their modern descendants today. Once we understand that, once we realize that all prophecy is dual, number one, for the time in which it was given, number two, for the last days. Now, I want you to listen because we say we are one nation under God. In honor money, we say in God we trust, and that is anything but true. If we did trust in God, we wouldn't be where we are today, and we wouldn't be ready to suffer the judgment of God and the heavy hand of His correction. Now, in spite of all the things that go on and all the problems that take place, you and your own home can return to God and find God and find truth. And yes, we do have fellowship groups in various places in the United States and Canada and various places in the world. But it does have to start out with one individual who will turn to God and who will repent. And who will also look at the world through the eyes of Scripture and understand what is going on. So let's come to Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. And let's read here what God says. Now remember in Jerusalem, God had Solomon build him a temple according to the plans that he gave to his father David. God put his presence in the temple. And even Solomon ended up sinning against God. Because you see, there is a sin of neglect, which develops into a sin of backsliding, which develops into a sin of forgetfulness, which develops into a sin of rejecting God, which develops into sins of sanctifying evil in the name of the Lord when God said, do not do it. That's what we have here in Jeremiah 7. So God told Jeremiah, who was a priest, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word. Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. God always holds out repentance. What was the first thing that Jesus said? when he came into Galilee preaching the gospel. He said, repent and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Same way today. We're a lot closer to the coming of the kingdom of God and the return of Jesus Christ. But when he was here in person, he was the representative of the kingdom of God on earth, preaching the truth of God, the message from the Father, the truth about salvation, the truth about righteousness, the truth about how to live God's way. But just exactly as the people in Jesus' time refused to believe, 
And God destroyed Jerusalem at that time, too. Remember, there were two destructions of Jerusalem. We're going to read about the sins which caused the first destruction. But the second destruction was so thorough and complete because they rejected God manifested in the flesh and refused his words. Now, these are the words of God. Verse 4, do not trust in lying words. Do you trust in lying words? We have liars-in-chief running Washington, D.C. today, don't we? We have liars-in-chief running the world, don't we? Look at the U.N. And they were saying, because the temple of the Lord was there, that if we're here with the temple of the Lord, then everything is just fine. Just like people are told. If you come to church every Sunday, and if you come to Easter Mass and Christmas Mass, and if you give to the poor, everything's just fine. I'm a Catholic, my parents were Catholic, and that's good enough for me. God says, no, it's not good enough for me. Same way with the Protestants. You have lying doctrines. You have false beliefs. Do you keep Halloween? That's a lie. You keep Christmas? That's a lie. You keep New Year's? That's a lie. Do you keep Easter? That's a lie. Do you keep Sunday? That's a lie. How can you say we don't trust in lying words? But they do. And what about our finances? It's all built on debt. And now we have a mountain of debt. Trillions! Hundreds of trillions when you include debt around the world that is impossible to pay. And the borrower is the slave of the lender. Never forget that. Now God says, verse 5, For if you will thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you will thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, because innocent blood is what God is going to judge this nation on. Number one, nor walk after other gods to your hurt. Now he says, if you do repent, I'm not going to remove you from this place. But if you don't repent, you are going to be removed. Verse 8, Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Now think about these words. How many lies do you trust in? How many times a day do you lie to yourself? Do you kid yourself? Do you think that you can lie to your children? My, what a wonderful thing that it is with all of these religious practices that we have. We take them out. Well, Halloween's for the kiddies. Yes, that's what Satan says. It's for the kiddies because we want to get them indoctrinated. Well, Christmas is for the kiddies. Yes, we want to get them to believe in the wrong God and worship a tree. You put a Christmas tree in your house? Did you ever think that that is Satan's symbol in your house in commemoration of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Oh, that couldn't be. It's so wonderful. And it smells so good. And we do so many good things together and have such a wonderful time. All based on lies. Now you may have a good time, but where is God? So God says, will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you do not know? Will you? Well, let's have all the religions get together. Isn't that nice? We'll have this wonderful ecumenical movement. Oh, yes, that's such a brilliant and wonderful thing. 
and then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations? Really? We're delivered to? We have the grace of God. We have his approval. We are his people. And we're good people at heart. So God says, has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, says the Lord. Try the whole nation. Where is their truth? Where is their love? Where is their righteousness? Now God says, you go see where I put my tabernacle in Shiloh. And you see what I did to that, because when people come to God, and stuck the branch in his nose and say, we're delivered to do these things. God's judgment is coming. Let's come over here and see what God has said. All he wanted them to do was obey his voice, but they wouldn't do it. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to obey... The voice of God is found in the Bible. See, because God is not going to love you while you're lying, stealing, cheating, committing adultery, committing sodomy, committing perversion. Now, if you repent, God's love will be sufficient to forgive that. But then, like Jesus told those whom he healed, go and sin no more. So we all have to ask ourselves, what am I going to do? I ask myself every day. I pray to God every day, oh Lord, lead me in what you want me to do. Because I know that the way in a human being is not there naturally. That's why we have the Word of God, and we're all held accountable to it. So this is what he said to them, verse 23, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Who wants to have a ruined, messed up life? Nobody. But how many are willing to obey the voice of God? Start with the Ten Commandments. Those are the words he spoke. See how you do. Verse 24, But they did not obey, nor bow their ear, but walked in their own counsels, in the imaginations of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. They still didn't hearken to God. They didn't listen to him. What if you went to the White House and said to everyone there, God commands you to quit lying and tell the truth. And then you went over to the House of Representatives and you said, God said, quit lying and tell the truth. And then you went over to the Federal Reserve, and said, quit lying and stealing the money and creating those things you call money that are not money and obey the truth. And you went to the Senate and you said, quit lying. Tell the truth and obey the truth. Why? They would have the Capitol Police there. They would escort you out. You would be labeled as a kook as a nut, as a fanatic? How dare you ask us to tell the truth and obey God? Well, that's what God requires. Have you had enough trouble? Have you had enough trials? Have you had enough crises? How much more can you take? All right, let's go on. Verse 28, This is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord their God, nor receives 
correction, truth has perished. It is cut off from their mouth. How bad is it? Here's what God told Jeremiah. Cut off your hair and throw it away, and take up a lamentation on the high places, for the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. Why is God's wrath coming? But I want you to think about it. I want you to take all these messages that we have just done here and put them all together, and it will give you a big picture. Verse 30, For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, says the Lord. Have we been doing evil? Lying, cheating, stealing, committing adultery, and abominations? What are those abominations? And why is God's judgment going to be so hard and harsh? And how can a God of love do that? because he is a God of love. That's why he will do it. They have done evil in my sight. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. Now notice verse 31, because here is the sin that they had, which they did not repent of, and it was the very major cause, in fact, the foundational cause as to why God destroyed the nation, God sent it into captivity, God destroyed the city, destroyed his temple. God is not going to have people come to where he placed his name and bring their abominations. So here's what they did. And it started with Solomon the one who built the temple, the son of David, the one who had God appear to him twice. Verse 31, They built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. And Solomon started this by offering incense to Moloch, the god Moloch. They had this instead of abortion. They would give birth to the children and then dedicate them to Moloch. And they would be put on the arms of the statue of Moloch, beneath which was a fiery blaze always burning. And they sacrificed their children by placing them on the arms. And the priest would pull the lever and the arms would come up and the child would slide down into the fiery pit and burned alive. Oh, aren't we religious and sanctimonious? Didn't we make, oh, it's, it's a hard thing to do, but it's, it's really the highest thing you can do to offer your child to Moloch. You know, that was the justification. And why did they offer their children? Because they were given over to sex, 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 adultery, fornication. And so that was their birth control. Now notice what God says. To burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command them, nor did it even come into my mind. Now, there are some few organizations who are trying to stop abortion. But it's like a man with a handheld fire extinguisher standing before a blazing forest trying to put out the fire because they have made it the law of the land. And the politicians, beginning with the president, right on down to the smallest person in the land, and even bringing in 11 and 12 year old girls that the school can take them to the abortion clinic and have an abortion performed upon them that they can't even ask permission of their parents 
And if you don't think that is evil, then you don't know what evil is. To take that creation of God in the safety of the womb of the mother. And by the way, you can hear the heartbeat of the new child at 26 days. And for anyone to claim that that is not a human being at conception is a satanic, abominable liar. And there are lecherous, murderous men and women who condone that to the tune of 3,000 a day Every day in the United States of America alone, 1.2 million lives snuffed out and killed at the altar of the abortion table by the doctor who's the abortion priest and the scientists who can receive all of that fetal tissue and experiment with it so that they can give life to greedy human beings who do not want to take care of their own lives and they want new hearts and new eyes and new limbs and refuse to repent to God. Can there be anything more dastardly than that? Now let's look at a psalm. Let's come to Psalm 106. You think we're fine and upstanding people? You think our nation is sending up good things to God? And then you wonder why everything is happening, why everything is collapsing, why you are oppressed at everything that goes on. There is no truth in the land. There is no love among people. And we slaughter and kill the most innocent of life, the creation of God, and strip it out of the womb and say, we are delivered to do this. This is the law of the land. Well, it's not the law of God. Psalm 106 and verse 36. And they serve their idols. What is your idol? Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they had sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. And they were defiled with their works and went a-whoring after their own inventions. Therefore the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people, and he abhorred his inheritance. Yes, the sin of abortion. The sin of abortion is the great crime that God says, if you cease that, if you outlaw it, and if you stop all of your adultery and fornication and homosexuality, I will hold back my hand of judgment but it has to begin with the president. And oh, by the way, the second abominable sin with it is same-sex marriage. Let's see what they're doing when they do this. Psalm 119 and verse 73, speaking of an individual life, and this is you, and this is me, and this is every human being that has not been aborted, but born and live. God inspired this. Your hands have made me and formed me. God has fashioned you in the womb and brought you forth. Now, every woman out there and every man out there, you need to ask yourself the question, is the drive of sex so much that you can't contain yourself or you don't want to do the honorable thing that is marry and bring children into a home where there's a mother and a father? This is the sin of the people of God, the modern nations of Israel and Judah today, who are given over to obsession and sex 
and pleasure and lust, and God is going to bring it to an end because he has been filled with the evil and sins and the sanctimonious, how shall I put it, blither that we are God's people and we are good and we're going to rebuild this nation like never before. You aren't going to do it and God is not there to help unless you repent. So you need all of our literature and all of our books. You need to find out what you need to do. You get the book, Lord, what should I do? And our book on baptism, and you start getting your life straightened out yourself. Because it must begin with you as a committee of one between you and God. And then God will take it from there. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. And this is Fred Coulter saying, until next time, so long, everyone.